Are we live? Great read that. Anyway, well it's Friday. We're in Yalding and not Swanley because we've changed offices, studios. Anyway, it's Fast Car TV. Let's go and sit down. Um, got Phil Wheaton back with us this week because he was so good last week. Let's go. Hello, and so we've got Phil Whedon back with us this week, and as you're a man of great taste, you sell a car shirt, right? You mean for that? Where'd you get that from? Uh, I don't know, charity shop probably. We're going to talk about retro cars again, uh, retro projects. So, say if you've got five thousand pound burning a hole in your pocket. Yep. Last time we had two thousand. What are you going to go for? Do you know what? I really struggled at this price point, and I don't know why. Because in theory, should be at least twice as easy to buy the two grand one, right? I quite like. I do like E thirty nine five series, and I like E forty six three series. Can I get a three thirty CI in a nice condition one? Maybe one of the later sport ones. Is it the CI Sport? Yeah, I think you probably. Paint? Yeah, I think you would. I think would probably be my choice because I love that engine. We had an E forty six. 330ci coupe as a project car for total bmw it had 203,000 miles on the clock it purred like a kitten even though it had all those miles on it an absolute honey to drive it was so, a sweet spot wasn't it the e46 yes yeah, yeah. they rusted they rusted a bit i remember that Emma went around the arches again like they always do but two and a half to five gets you a 330 yeah you, you can get a cabrio one as well if you wanted a soft top one but yeah something like that would be good i think would be my um other choice for me I think I've mentioned this before actually, I still want one, um, be a Nissan 300 ZX, nice. ZX32. Nice. I keep looking for them, I just want the manual, I don't want an auto, but it's probably better off buying one of them than a really ropey yeah, yeah. twin turbo, but I'd probably end up buying a really ropey twin turbo because I make bad car choices. <laughs> I really want one, I will, I will own one one day, but they're going, they're going to go like they're all the other so they're now, they're they? get It's such a shame, too. fantastic car. Japanese stuff does do that doesn't it, it mm. kind of falls to this sort of basement level and then like you say they either get bought for the track or for drifting or whatever and then if you really want like a decent one for the road then you've missed yeah. out really so it's the same with the s14s now it wasn't that long ago you could buy an s14 for three four grand yeah i'm a 300 zx or maybe an escort xr 3i don't know can you get one of them for five grand mm, don't know probably not four maybe and you are an e46 e46 330 yeah there we go all right welcome to two minute tech Again, it could be one minute, three minutes, somewhere in between. Car wrapping. A lot of people don't even know what that is. They don't really understand it. So the best way to describe it is like a massive sticker that goes over the car to cover up the paint. Now, why would you do that? You say, well, that's a bit of a weird thing to do. Well, there's a couple of benefits. One, it actually protects the paint underneath. You could go to a show one weekend having your normal paint. Go go back the week after you've got a different colour. It takes probably two to three days to wrap a car properly. You get some people say I'll do it in a day and a half, but if you really want a proper job, two to three days to wrap a car properly. Cost-wise, again, medium-sized car, starting at a thousand pound, less on the cheaper side. Depends on the actual vinyl, so you can get all different types of vinyl as well. So you can have satin, look, you can have matte, you can have gloss. Vehicle wrap films are changing all the time. Every year, new ones come out. You can have metal flake look, flip paint looks. I actually did a wrapping course once with Midge, and it is a really difficult art. Um, but if you do it correctly, it looks absolutely amazing. So that's vehicle wrapping for you. So if you're thinking, you know, don't want, don't want a full respray, but I would like to change the color of my car, that's the way to go. Get your car wrapped. And that's a wrap. So, time for feature car of the week, and this one is from this time last year, and it is the Mark 3.5 Golf uh, Cabaret, which was one of the coolest cars last year, and I would go through it in the magazine, but we can do better than that this week, because he's in the car park. Let's go. Last year I re-trimmed the full interior, which was a big job. This year I've just done a few small little tweaks just to change it up from last year. Rather than being full leather like it was, they've gone to tweed, uh, houndstooth tweed. Inside the glove box was done, fuse box cover we had done to match and we had it laser engraved with all the fuse order. That was another change for this year, was the Meguiar's bag, which is here in my boot build. Got carried away and changed it to leather to match the full interior. Probably with the boot build, I'm up to about 
420 hours, I'd say. Pretty much everything but the paint I'd done myself or with the help of my dad or friends. There's just lots of small bits that I like the most that literally no one will ever notice. Like my rear arches, I don't know if anyone knows, but they're actually about an inch wider to a standard car because they've been panel beaten wide. Little bits like that that are my favorite, like the head unit that was all custom made to fit in to look like an OEM change. When I started trimming the car, my boss just bought a new CNC stitching machine. It also does perforations, so I thought why not make use of that and make some quite funky speaker covers so I could then carry on with the full lever. It's on airlift 3P. That was one of the first things I bought for the car, was the air ride. And I bought it second hand because at the time I was on apprenticeship wage. As you can see, my fitment's perfect without in an arch every time, which I've done before. <laughs> it's a classic Volkswagen Sahara beige. I always wanted to change the colour and if I was to own, at the time my dream car was a classic Beetle in this colour, couldn't afford a Beetle, so I spent the money to make this the colour I wanted and then since then I got my Beetle so it won't be going this colour. <laughs> this car shows that you can actually build a show car on a budget ish. I built it on an apprentice, apprenticeship wage. I was an apprentice for three years and it took me three years to build this. Yeah, you don't you don't need big money to build a car. You just need a few friends along the way to help you. It's probably at its point where you won't see much change, but there's forever little bits that I want to wrap up here and there. There's still a fair bit more in the boot that I want to do. My engine bay, much to everyone else's disagreement, really annoys me and I think it's quite tatty. Players Classic was the first time you saw it. I, that was its first ever appearance. I won on the Saturday there. Won best Mark III at Edition. It's done well and now it's just time to enjoy it. That was, well, that was the plan this year. <laughs> so, it's the time of the show that we're going to talk about well, they do the mass debate, and um, I think we, we had a press release come through the other day, actually, and it was about bad modifications, so right. really bad car customisation sins. We've all done them in the past, I guess. Uh, what, what do you think? What, what's your...? Well, I know one modification that always used to drive me mad as a Jaguar aficionado was the leaper on the bonnet. Oh, right. They weren't official spec, and then people would put them on, and they never appeared on that car, and that was one modification that I thought, I don't know what you're doing, you've just lowered the value of it. I think it's technically illegal, although there's a lot of haziness about the rules of that. Another thing that often uh, Jaguar people have done is excessive use of chrome. Right. And I, I saw it, I think I saw an X-Type, I think it was, so, for, you know, Jaguar X-Type, and this guy had literally plastered it with chrome, as if that would somehow make it more upmarket. Like, so he put, Chrome surrounds all over the windows. You put chrome beading around the tail lights. I mean, it just looked like some sort of tacky jewellery store or something. It was, it was ridiculous. Some people say like bad mods are neons, but I don't. Know, I quite like neons. I think they're kind of, kind of retro cool again now. Um, for me, I can't stand it when people up badge the car. Oh. So buy a standard E46 and put an M3 badge in it. Dreadful. Like, oh. And then probably the other one, like bad for modifications, is when people spend all their money on a really nice set of wheels and put the cheapest set of Chinese tyres they can find on it. It's just like, really, it should be around the other way. If, you can't, if, you've, got, if you've got a certain amount of budget, spend the money on the tyres. because Aren't there some thing. companies that will sell you the wheels with the tyres? Yeah. And that's what they've done, isn't it? They've bought the wheels and tyre combo because it looks like great value, but like you say, they're then they just put some cheap tyres on it yeah. and it's just a terrible idea, particularly with a high performance car. Yeah. Or spent all their money on these amazing wheels and then gone, yeah. uh, hang on a minute, I need some tyres. What can I get for 20 quid a corner? Yeah. Is that it? It's time to go home. I think it is, yeah. Well, it's Friday, isn't it? Yeah, Friday. Fish and chip supper? Or yeah, fish and chips. Pint of beer. Reruns a countdown. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, Phil. No worries. Catch you soon. Ta-da.